Hey there, my name is Abe. I'll be narrating this tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at SSO with SAML. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at how to configure SAML from the perspective of Hue. In this case, Hue would be a service provider, and we'll be using the Shibboleth Identity Provider. We won't be showing how to set up Shibboleth. Here are a couple of quick notes in configuring Shibboleth, though. In order for Shibboleth to contact Hue, it needs to know about it. That means you need to set up a relying party. Also, Shibboleth needs to be set up to use LDAP. In this case, we'll be using OpenDS. For the purposes of demonstration, we'll be using the username password handler in Shibboleth. Okay, now that we got the logistics over with, let's begin. We need to configure Hue to communicate with Shibboleth, as well as use the XMLSEC binary. So first, we find the XMLSEC binary on our file system. Then, we add it to the Hue configuration. Next, we get the metadata from the Shibboleth IDP, we save it to a file, and configure Hue to point to it. We massage the data so that it'll work with our service provider. Now, we copy the certificate file and key file from the Shibboleth IDP and tell Hue to use them. These files are actually in PEM format, so they can be renamed to something.pem. Hue also comes with a SAML backend. We need to tell it to use that, otherwise Hue won't work with SAML. Now, we try to start Hue. Oops, it's not working. Well, that's actually because we forgot to install Django SAML 2, which is a library that Hue uses to communicate with the IDP. And now, after we get that running, we can start Hue. Let's go check out what Hue looks like now. Oh no, another error. Well, it looks like our metadata is incorrect. It says we don't have a relying party configured. Lucky for us, we've seen this before. All I really need to do is make sure that I'm using the right IP address that's configured with the relying party. So in hue.ini, I need to change my IP address and port. Now we should be able to communicate with the IDP. Et voila! Let's try to log in. We know this is working because when I enter a user with the wrong password, it doesn't succeed. But then, when I enter the correct password, we can completely log in. Hope you enjoyed the video. I also hope that this enables your enterprise. Thank you for watching.